and brought the Yahawa, Brakatha, Yahawasha, brought the Yahawa, Brakatha, Yahawasha, Bashem, Rakakwadash. Double honor to the apostles, the elders. Salutations to you, sincere brothers, teaching and truth and in sincerity. This lesson will be entitled The Clock. Lord will you are edified by source ndtv.com. And this article is entitled How Long Till Midnight? The Doomsday Clock is about to be reset again. Doomsday. According to the Etiman, doom means what? Judgment. And as a verb, to judge, pass judgment on. Keep this in mind. While nuclear annihilation remains the most probable and acute existential threat to humanity, it is not only one of the potential catastrophes the doomsday clock measures as the 75th anniversary of the clock approaches. The clock currently adds 100 seconds from midnight the metaphorical time when the human race could destroy the world with technologies of its own making. And guess what? It will happen. Case in point. Isaiah 55 and verse 11. So shall my word be that go forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. And that thing is what? World War III, which will be exercised by nuclear activity as well. This is a segment within the judgment that will happen during the day of Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah. Doomsday means what? Judgment to pass judgment on. And that is what the day of the Lord entails. Salvation and judgment. Salvation for the elect of Israel and judgment for two-thirds of Israel and the non-elect around the four corners of the world, as well as these other nations, beginning with Esau, Edom. Amos 5 and 18. Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord, Yahweh. To what end is it for you? Meaning, will you be saved? Or will you be judged? The day of the Lord Yahweh is darkness and not light. And this is also symbolic for what? The day of the Lord been also classified as doomsday. Okay. The metaphorical time when the human race could destroy the world with technologies of its own making, hence World War III. Revelation 9 and 12. One woe is past, and behold, there come two woes more hereafter. Now, the one woe is past. That is referring to World War I. And behold, there come two woes more hereafter, meaning World War II and World War III. So let's jump to Revelation 11. I want to say it's 13. It's lock and 14. Revelation 11 and 14, the second woe is past, World War II. And behold, the third woe come quickly, referring to World War III. 
and again, nuclear activity will be activated. The hands have never before been this close to midnight. There is scant hope of it winding back on what will be its 75th anniversary. And guess what? We are in the end of Esau's rulership. There's no going back. Things will continue to move forward. As you can hear the sound of the alarm in the background, it's all spiritual. The clock was originally devised as a way to draw attention to nuclear conflagration. But the scientists who founded the bulletin in 1945 were less focused on the initial use of the bomb than on the irrationality of stockpiling weapons for the sake of nuclear hegemony. So lucky. Let me um Hegemony. Hegemony, Salakia, Salakia. Hegemony. Stockpiling weapons for the sake of nuclear hegemony. They realized more bombs did not increase the chances of winning a war or make anyone safe when just one bomb would be enough to destroy New York. Let's jump to Isaiah. Nine and six. Salakia, verse five. For every battle of the warrior is with confused noise, referring to these ancient battles. And you've seen this displayed in movies such as uh, Braveheart, 300, The Last Samurai, okay? Spartacus. The Vikings and garments rolled in blood, but this shall be with burning and fuel of fire, referring to World War Three. Joel two and two, a day of darkness and of gloominess. Also, doomsday, a day of darkness and of gloominess and doom. Remember, doom means to pass judgments on. A day of clouds and of thick darkness. The morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and a strong. There has not been ever the light referring to these nuclear missiles. Neither shall be any more after it, because once Yahweh Bashem utilized these people referring to nuclear missiles, they will never exist again, even to the years of many generations. A fire devour before them, and behind them a flame burn. The land is as the Garden of Eden before them, meaning prior to them making contact. The land is considered what? A paradise, meaning before they make contact. Because once nuclear activity has been exercised and those missiles go to their assigned lots, they will destroy everything they fall upon. And behind them a desolate wilderness. I just broke that down. Yea, and nothing shall escape them. Hence, doomsday. Let's go to Joel 3 and 1. For behold, in those days and in that time when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, meaning what? Us being freed from the captivity of Esau. Verse 2. 
I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Yahweh Shapat, which means Yahweh's judgment, hence doomsday. And it should be also called Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah's doomsday. And will plead with them. Plead means what? Judge. Plead with them, there for my people and for my heritage, Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. World War Three. Let's jump down to verse 12. Let the heathen be wakened and come up to the valley of Yahweh Shapat. All right. Location, Middle East. For there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. Hence, doomsday. Put ye in the circle for the harvest is ripe. Come, get you down for the press is full. The fats overflow for the wickedness is great. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. For the day of the Lord, Yahweh is near in the valley of decision. And there you have it. There you have it. There is scant hope of it winding back on what will be its 75th anniversary. This will happen. This will happen. Lord will you edify Shalom.